My name is Ricardo Johnson. I'm a 1999 graduate of Mother Seton Academy. Uh, and for me, Catholic school education has made all the difference. When you first meet Ricardo Johnson, it's easy to see why so many are drawn to the man. The build of a linebacker with the mind and passion of a lawyer. The intelligence and sincerity of a man who retains his boyish charm. His smile is contagious. And his wit, well, that's something you only need to experience once. I'm a lover, not a fighter, right? <laughs> his story could have taken a much different turn. Born to a single mom, Ricardo wasn't like the other kids in his neighborhood schools. My mother uh, gave me books all the time, and so I, I mean, I read a lot. Strong but studious, Ricardo spent precious time worrying instead of working. I went to sixth grade a year younger than everybody else, and so I was a lot smaller than everybody else. And so to be, uh, you know, a small kid, you know, not small now, but you know, to be a small kid going through the hallways, you're, uh, you know, you're the prime target for people to pick on you. And so uh, I think it becomes, and I think that's the, the, the bad part about it, is that it does become second nature for you to remove yourself or become second nature, second nature for you to always be on your guard and sort of defensive or you know, you know, tough, um, which is also something that I don't think a sixth grader should have to be all the time. But getting him out of that situation and into a safe and nurturing environment was out of the question. There was no money. Things would soon change for them both. She enrolled in college courses and, along with Ricardo, discovered Mother Seton Academy. I guess the first difference you noticed just in switching schools, um, at least the first difference I noticed, was one that I had white teachers. Um, I mean, I think that was just interesting for me. A couple of my uh, classmates were Hispanic. That was interesting for me. I mean, I came from an elementary school and in, the, in sixth grade, a school that was majority if not all black students um, and a majority of black teachers and so just receiving that sort of uh, diversity in people. Mother Seton Academy is an all scholarship independent Catholic middle school dedicated to the education of boys and girls from low-income families in Baltimore. Well one, to my, I mean, to my family and to most of the families at Mother Seton you wouldn't get an education like this if it wasn't through a scholarship program. Um, even if it was a half scholarship for the students that come to Mother Seton, you still probably wouldn't be there because you couldn't afford the other half. I recognize then the opportunity, but I recognize now the sacrifice. Being on the board of Mother Seton, I see just how hard it is to raise every dime that we get in for the school. And it's, uh, you know, it, it makes me continually uh, grateful for the people who actually put in the time and put in the effort and put in the money to give me that, that, give me that scholarship. Uh, now I recognize just how much effort it took to do it. Sponsored by the collaborative efforts of six Baltimore area congregations, Mother Seton Academy began changing lives for the better in the fall of 1993. You walk through the doors, you'll see, you know, uh, St. Elizabeth St. Seton and, and you'll see uh, the founders of the uh, orders that support Mother Seton and so that became just a part of life. And it was one of those Marinus brothers who, unbeknownst to them both, would have a lifelong impact on Ricardo Johnson. Uh, my name is Brother Charles Johnson and I am a member of the Society of Mary. Brother Charles taught me in seventh grade and eighth grade. He was my main teacher for eighth grade at Mother Seton uh, and he was one of my first male role models um, and I think and he, I mean, I'm, hopefully I've told him this, um, that he has made such an impact on my life that I still use sayings that he, that he said in the classroom. Um, he was funny, he was smart, he was what I thought a man should be, and he's who I wanted to be. Ricardo was a good student, and I think I helped him to realize that and to uh, try to achieve. But it was a coming-of-age moment, a lesson many kids learn from their dads that sticks with Ricardo. In the closet, on the back of the door, were about 50 ties. And every morning, wh whoever wanted to, he'd let come in, pick a tie. He taught us how to tie a tie. Um, it became invaluable when I went to Mount St. Joe's. He didn't wear a tie every day. Um, and he taught us how to tie ties. Uh, and it became just invaluable because now, like, I like wearing a tie. I mean, it's what I see as, number one, being like Brother Charles, which is being the man I want to be. And so I do it all the time now, and I like it. In reality, I helped to raise 
some of our students, they didn't have a male figure in their life. So things that a father or an older brother might do, I ended up doing. And it was a mantra, a challenge for the future that Ricardo says would change his life. He used to say to us in the classroom, and I still say it even when I mentor, when I mentor students today, and I think of it to myself, but there's nothing wrong with working at a gas station. Unless you could have owned that gas station. His impact on my life has been tremendous. Part of Mother Seton's mission is to help its graduates go on to four-year Catholic high schools. Many of these schools work with students and their families who provide scholarship money. Ricardo's choice? Mount St. Joseph High School in Irvington. When I came here, I loved being here. Never did I leave when the bell rung. Yeah. I stayed here. I, I was one of the last people to leave this campus because I really did love it. Like I'd go over and watch the teams practice. I'd go in the cafeteria and talk to people. It was in those first few days of high school that Ricardo met one of the other great influences in his life, a man who saw a difference in the then 12-year-old, Barry Fitzpatrick, Mr. Fitz to the students. He's the principal of Mount St. Joe. He was one of those guys as a freshman even, not afraid to throw the door open in my office, come in. Um, I, I, I like to, to say to people, I, it would crush me to hand a diploma to a senior who I didn't know anything about or whose name I didn't know. So I sort of consciously, from the minute they get here, do whatever I can to remember names and, and to make a connection with some part of their personality, their life, outside the school even. He was easy to do that with. Once again, I go by people, um, and he was somebody who I wanted to be like. Um, he uses really nice pens. I wanted to use really nice pens. Um, like Those sorts of things are just the things that uh, I look to, and I'm always searching, even now, searching for mentors. Um, and so when I saw him, he was my mentor. Ricardo thrived on the campus, finding friends, becoming editor of the school newspaper, joining clubs, and making the halls his home. The perfect Mount St. Joseph student is one who comes in ready to learn, ready to get involved, and then acts on that readiness, doesn't just sit back and watch people uh, do the job for them. And he certainly was one of those. A non-Catholic student in a Catholic institution, Ricardo joined the gospel choir and leaned on his role models to tell him about God. And that's what Catholic education does. It names the light because light lets us see, light warms us, it surrounds us with goodness. And light, for me, has names like Ricardo and all the other kids that have gone here. On Junior Retreat, I realized what my place in the world would be or at least what I wanted it to be, and, the, and what I, if I worked hard enough, it could be. And that's to make, you know, to make other people's lives better, and to make students like me have the opportunities that I had. Um, and so for me, that's what the investment in Catholic education does. It's what my investment of time, energy, and what little money I have right now, that's, that my investment goes into helping somebody else receive the opportunity I, uh, that I had. And if I don't do that, I think it's, you know, it's you know, shame on me for not, um, because I can't imagine where I'd be had I not gone to these places. Ricardo graduated as a decorated member of the class of 2003, with a bright future at yet another Catholic institution, LaSalle University in Philadelphia. Putting to work the knowledge, integrity, and faith he mastered at Mother Seton Academy and the Mount, Ricardo thrived at the university. He was voted student body president, president of the College Republicans, an executive member of the African American Student League, and a member of the LaSalle Gospel Choir. It's no surprise that in the end, Ricardo was valedictorian of his class. His membership in our community has been characterized by honesty, integrity, civility, and citizenship. In our time here, we learned that the right choice is not always the easy one. We learned that the path to doing what is right is hard. But his hunger for higher learning didn't end on that podium in Philly. Ricardo went on to law school at the University of Maryland in 2007 and graduated this year. While in law school, Ricardo was an academic achievement law fellow, helping incoming students develop skills to be more successful. He was also an editor of the Maryland Law Journal of Race, Religion, and Class. He currently is awaiting the results of his bar exam. My name is Ricardo Johnson, and for me, Catholic school education has made all the difference. 